I saw this uh, on my uh, computer screen when I was taking photographs of Jupiter at about one o'clock in the morning, my time, Monday morning. Um, I, I'm a regular photographer of Jupiter and I'd taken a picture of this same part of Jupiter two days before and it was pretty clear to me that this black spot was not there two days before. What does it look like to you? What is it? Uh, well, when you look at it through a telescope, it just looks like a black dot and really all you're seeing is a lot of deep down material in Jupiter's atmosphere that's been thrown upwards by this explosion. Now, it is said to be uh, the size of the planet Earth. That's enormous. This is uh, something massive, isn't it? Well, it just goes to show the scale of the planet Jupiter. The mark that you're showing now um, that your viewers are looking at is approximately the size of the Earth. And uh, Jupiter, of course, is just so much more massive. Uh, that spot, uh, in Jupiter terms, isn't really going to do it any lasting damage at all. Now, it's amazing to me, uh, first of all, that you've discovered this, but uh, you said it was at 1 in the morning your time. Are you frequently up till 1 a.m. taking pictures of Jupiter? Well, I, I am sometimes. Uh, the, the weather conditions around here, of course, we're in our middle of our winter at the moment. The weather conditions were close to freezing, and I have to say to you that it was a very near thing. I, I almost uh, closed up and, and turned all the gear off about an hour before that. And... Uh, uh, for whatever reason, I decided to keep going for a little while longer, and uh, just a while after that, uh, this impact mark uh, rotated around into view. So it was very close. Well, you know, a lot of people are up at that hour, but most of them are watching TV, and I gather you were watching TV too when this happened. Well, you know, the, my telescope was competing with two other of my great interests, and that is uh, the cricket and, uh, and the golf. Uh, I have to say I did come up and take a break for about half an hour and uh, watched uh, some of the final round of the British Open. The British Open and the Ashes? Um, so, let me ask you, who do you call when you spot something like this? What did you do? Well, that was another great dilemma for me. Um, I didn't know at that stage whether anybody else was recording this data. So first and foremost, I thought the most important thing I can do is keep recording data so that I can generate some some images to show other people what's going on. But uh, by about two o'clock in the morning, I'd really given up on that and, and was now back up at the house trying to email uh, some of the colleagues that I have around the world and some contacts I have, uh, in particular, people, uh, other professionals, um, uh, such as the, the people at NASA with larger telescopes. Uh, had anyone else seen it? As far as I know, and, and this is still very early days, as far as I know, nobody else was recording Jupiter at that time, so I, I don't think anybody else saw this uh, on, the f on its first pass around being visible to the Earth. Uh, by the time the second pass happened 10 hours later, uh, when Jupiter had turned around and show was showing us that same place again, of course there was massive interest uh, starting at that time, so a lot, a lot of people recorded it from the second time around. Now, we have been showing NASA's image of the spot until now. We have your image, the picture you yourself took, and I think we're going to put that up. There it is. Um, you don't really notice it right away. Uh, you need a pretty good eye. You need to be looking in the right place. As we look at this, I'm, I'm just curious about this. Um, are they going to call it, uh, is it going to be named after you? Is this now the Wesley Scar, the Wesley Spot, the Wesley Eruption? Well, it's, it's only likely to last for one to two weeks. Uh, based on the, uh, the images from the Shoemaker-Levy 9 comet collision back in 1994, um, that, back in 1994, that was a much larger series of collisions, and those marks looked very much like this when that happened, but uh, within two to three weeks, pretty much all of that material had just uh, disappeared. Now, you mentioned uh, 1994. That was the last really big hit that anyone noticed on Jupiter. How often does this kind of thing happen? And, and frankly, uh, seeing it happen on Jupiter, how worried should we be about it happening to us on Earth? Well, look, Jupiter is doing a very good job in uh, scooping up a lot of this material that's still floating around in the solar system. It's just got so much gravity uh, as it swings around the outer part of the solar system, it can really pull in and swallow up uh, many of the cometary uh, objects and uh, debris left over from the formation of the solar system. So it's doing a good job in keeping us safe by cleaning out a lot of these bits and pieces. Let me ask you a question that may be obvious to the scientists out there, but isn't obvious to me. Whatever hit Jupiter caused an enormous impact, an enormous amount of energy. What would it have sounded like? 
<laughs> if you were close enough to hear it, I don't think you'd have survived it, I think is the short answer to that one. But this is an enormous explosion, bigger than anything we would have ever experienced on Earth, um, bigger than anything we could have lived through. Well, that's certainly true. The, the impact mark, again, that you're showing on, on the screen, the impact remains, uh, covers an area about the same diameter as our planet. So it's likely that the impacting body was uh, something in the order of 50 to 100 miles across and moving at speeds of somewhere around 50 to 100 um, kilometres per second. Now, that generates an unbelievable amount of energy when it collides with pretty much anything, but uh, especially with, uh, with something the size of Jupiter.